Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at TypeScript interfaces. Hope you enjoy this video. Let's create our first example, interface, and then start off with all your interfaces with a capital I, so I department. That will show other developers this is of type interface. You can see here this I department has four properties. Now to actually consume that, what we'd have to do is say, let department one colon, and then the name of our interface, so I department, and then uh, equals open close. And notice right away that we get a, a uh, underscore, and then the error saying type is missing the following properties. So what it's saying is, your I interface has four properties. You did not consume any of them. Um, a lot of programmers say in documentation that this makes a contract. And when you are wanting to use a interface contract, you have to use all of its parts. So you can come right click on this and say uh, quick fix and then add missing properties. And notice that it gives you just the boilerplate on what you should use. I would just say department ID one, the name, the counting, the group administrative and modify date, uh, year, month, day, hour, minute, second. So you see that. Now to print that out, you just would need to say console log department one. Let's see what that would look like. Let's run that. And notice that we get UTC time when we did it this way. Now let's learn a couple other things about this. So if we come over here and we try to, oh, I don't like the word modify date. Uh, I just want to say modify date. Oh, look at that. It has to be the same spelling as our original. An interface is a contract. We can't remove a property. That would also give me an error. So they all have to be spelled the same and they all have to be available. Now, because we're using TypeScript, the word type is kind of important. It's data type. So I can't actually come here and like change the data type down here in my use of a interface. For instance, department ID number. I can't come down here and put this in quotes and it's going to end up telling me, Hey, uh, it's a string. Uh, that's a number. And of course, if I come up here and say string, it would give me an error and say, hey, uh, that needs to be a string and you got it as a number. So let's fix that. That makes that problem go away. So I think you see that the contract, the interface, you have to subscribe. You have to do all the business rules this is telling you. It's actually being smart for you. It's saying use this word and this data type for each of these. Can't leave one out. These are all required. Now let's look at a way that we can actually change what we can use. Now we can add optional properties to an interface. Notice on line six, I say create date and then a question mark. I said, okay, make that of type date. Notice in department one, create date is not available and I don't see any errors. When I try to print that, notice everything works fine. But if I were to come in and add create date there, I would just say comma enter create date. And then we'd have to just say a colon new date and then give it some kind of date range. We'll just copy this and notice no errors. And then when we print that, notice that we get create date. So here you see how to create optional properties. I just added a new property to iDepartment. It's called account code and its data type is string. On line 10, I did an assignment. Notice account code equals a CCT. And then let's console print that value. Notice we get the value a CCT. Now the goal of this interface is to prevent this new property 
account code from changing. Allow it initially, but then prevent it from changing. Now, how do we do that? Well, all we do is apply read-only keyword before the property name, the one that we want to protect. Notice group name does not have the read-only, so we are able to make changes, as you see on line 20, and then when we execute it, we are able to see the changes. But when we take down the account code and actually try to set its value to EX and ACT, notice the red bar. Well, that means it is a read-only attribute now. It cannot be changed. So notice we say interface iDepartment2. So this is a new name, extends the original name. And then notice here, and I'm going to add manager name to iDepartment. Not so much iDepartment, but iDepartment V2. iDepartment still only has uh, from department down to accounting code. Now, here is kind of like where it gets a little tricky. Notice I'm going to come down and I'm going to say lead department two. And it's going to say I department two. And then we'll say equals. Now notice here when we come and click on this and we say quick fix. I want you to see one of the errors. Well, not an error, but something happens and then you tell me why it happened. Notice we will say quick fix, add missing properties. So here you'll see that I started off with manager name. That's what we just added because we extended I department. And then it went through department, but you don't see create date. Now, why didn't create date get added to our you know, like that when we said fix. Well, it didn't get added because up here we said it's optional. We don't need this field. Now, if we remove that and then we try to come and do that again, then it works as you would expect. In this example, we're using another interface Interface I department. Notice I've kind of slimmed it down now. An ID and a name, a number and a string. Now you're going to have to imagine I have some kind of API out there and it has all departments. I was able to go get the eight departments that are in that table. Once I have those eight departments, it's going to be stored in this variable and it is an array of objects. We then say constant departments equals the interface, an array of interfaces, equals that object. Then I'm going to show you how to print that on just one line. And then I'm going to show you how to do that for each and loop over all of the values that are in that array. Let's do this. Run. So we got our first one, ID, fat arrow, document ID. You see that here. And then starting with one down to eight, you see how I used for each. And that is all using this interface I departments. I made it look like an array. In our final example, notice that we have an interface uh, I department, an interface I manager. Both of them have uh, two properties each. And then on line 11, notice I'm saying class business implements I department. And then I manager. Now I got to use all of these properties from both of these interfaces in my class object. Then once I do that, I say constructor ID to manager name, and then I get the values in there. Now my class business uses all of the implementations of our interfaces, which is pretty cool. Imagine someone real smart can go out there and define our objects for us, department and manager. Then all we have to do is build objects that implement their, their dream. Then we can somehow go out, fetch some data, and notice this is a, now an array of business. Imagine we wrote a SQL Server function that got this value. I'm going to assign that to X. And then I'm just going to use the old JavaScript for each. I'm going to loop over that, assign it to business, and get the business ID name and the manager name.
Let's run that. So, to engineering managed by Terry all the way to Brian. And that is the output of this. And there you have it, my friends. In short, the interface makes sure that you don't leave out any required fields when you're designing objects. So when you inherit from an interface, you know that somebody has thought about what's required. In this video, I showed you how to build an interface. I showed you some optional and read-only uh, keywords that you can use. And I showed you how to inherit them when you built your class object and not only one interface, but several interfaces. So these are skills that are much needed. You have to have these skills to, to move forward. I look forward to seeing you back in my next video. There's a lot more to learn about TypeScript in general. Have a good week. With this video, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be nice as well. Have a good week. Adios.